G'day, Liz. How are you feeling, first of all? And uh, welcome. Oh, thank you very, very much. Uh, look, I'm, I'm like many at the tail end of uh, a nasty flu, but um, thank you very much uh, for the well wishes. So uh, good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you so much for the invitation. Of course, I would much uh, prefer to be with you in person, but given my current uh, state of health, it's probably a good, a good thing that I'm in Canberra. Um, I've looked through the program. I can see you've had a really um, comprehensive uh, morning thus far and um, looking forward to being part of uh, this afternoon. I would like to start by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land, the Nullarbor and Nambri people, uh, for which I'm joining you today, and also to recognise the traditional owners of the land in which you're meeting, the Ghana people, and for which you call home. I'd also proudly uh, affirm our support uh, for The Voice. Can I also acknowledge uh, the Honourable Claire Shriven, Minister for Regional Development and Primary Industries, and to also acknowledge the Honourable Rob, Rob Karen. And Rob, I can see there in the picture, just in the corner, um, is of course the Chair of Regional Development SA and uh, a wonderful Director of the Institute. As you mentioned in the introduction, uh, we did have our uh, summit just last week uh, in Canberra. And uh, they say a week is a long time in politics. A week's a long time when you've been in bed since the summit. So uh, it's... Um, it's hard to believe it was only a week ago uh, that we welcomed uh, more than 300 people from right across the country uh, to see us launch the first progress report of the regionalization ambition. And I can see Alison there in the front too. And Alison, thank you very much for joining us and your contributions last week. And a big shout out to Rob, who was also with us for the, for the two full days. Um, so, look, today I'm going to share with you some of our uh, insights, obviously give you an update on, on the progress report and uh, some of our current research data and just try to give you a sense of our perspective on the world, where we see regional Australia. Uh, and really happy, I don't know how much time there'll be uh, for questions, but I'm really happy to take questions if there are any. And again, I apologise for my voice. It is not normally this husky. So let's do our best to get through. Um, I'm going to share the slide now. Hopefully this will work. Okay, that's coming through okay. Okay. Assuming green light. I'll kick off. So at the RAI, we know that regional Australia is experiencing change like never before, where we are writing what we call a new story of optimism. Recently, the RAI launched the Big Movers 2023 report, sharing sharing that the net gain to our regions in 2016 to 2021 census period saw almost 170,000 more people choose regions over our cities. This was triple the number of pre since the previous census period. We also saw a net gain of 57,000 millennials. So this is aged between 25 and 39 years. This is compared to a net loss of 37,000 in the previous census period. These are profound changes to our communities. Regional Australia should feel proud because people are truly voting with their feet. This is a choice that they are making, not one that has been put upon them. And it's the stories that reveal their why, the reasons why they keep choosing regions. It's to 
be rekindled with connections with partners and family and also finding new love the realization of career business and study dreams improved health and new perspectives that time and space is creating and for many it's the relief of the crippling mortgage stress and the anxiety that comes with that and of course, let's not forget forging those long sought after community connections at the school gate, local sporting club or charity. We are witnessing a major societal transition. People are looking for a better future for themselves and their families and more and more People believe that that future is in the regions. Three and a half million, in fact, dreaming of a life away from the hustle and bustle of our capital cities. This means that we're at a major tipping point to get this once in a generation transformation right. But we must think big and we must think long term. We must continue to shift our gaze from the bright lights of capitals to a nation that's more diverse and dispersed. Today, regional Australia, as you well know, is not a story of build it and they will come. People are already on the move and we need to strengthen our capacity to accommodate this societal shift. Demand for regional living is now at record highs, but as a country, we are not ready we're not prepared. We are still playing catch up. As a result, a series of pinch points have been exposed in our human capital, housing, childcare, healthcare, education, and indeed our soft infrastructure. Back in 2021, the RAI celebrated our 10th anniversary. So it provided an excellent reflection point to consider what we've learned. Despite many incredible achievements at many levels, there is still an undertone of deficit in regional Australia across the national discourse. What also became clear was that there was no plan for the advancement of regional Australia, no plan for the future. So in the absence of one, we created a plan. And it's a plan that's long-term, ambitious, that acknowledges that many of the issues in regional Australia are interlinked, and that also acknowledges the need for a systems thinking approach. So as you can see, it was a momentous day a little over a year ago when we first launched the regionalisation ambition with a framework to rebalance the nation. It's a set of 20 targets across five key areas, jobs and skills, population, livability, productivity, innovation, sustainability, and resilience. It aims to see regional Australia achieve greater outcomes in each of these areas. And at its core, it aspires towards 11 million people living prosperously in our regions by 2032. If we achieve this, modelling undertaken for this work has shown us that we can boost the nation's GDP by nearly an additional 14 billion by 2032. With no place in city or country worse off. The business case is clear and we know Australians support it. Investing in growth for regional Australia results in growth of Australia as a nation. The ambition was co-designed by government, industry, and thousands of regional champions to understand the collective effort and action. So by working together, we are blowing up the fragmentation and siloed approach that has held regions back. So far from a set and forget plan, the ambition is dynamic, it's evolving to meet the needs facing our regions. So while the RAI was the architect of the ambition, we by no means see ourselves as the owners. We are one of the coalition of the willing continues to grow. And by reporting on these targets, 
around housing, childcare, education, healthcare, productivity, innovation, and recruitment, we're shining a light on critical factors in the social fabric of our communities. So what did we find in our first year of reporting? Well, I'm pleased to tell you that in just one short year, the dial moved on moved in a positive direction for more than 13 measures across our 20. Whilst they were modest, they are still movement in the right direction, particularly across education, the transition to net zero in our regions and migration, where South Australia <clears throat> regions find themselves leading the charge. While the red regionalization Ambition 2032 provides a national holistic suite of targets. We know that each region and community has a very different story. So this year we sought to highlight where states are leading in progress across each of the targets. Regional South Australia continues to have the highest school attainment rates at 84.7% with the next highest attainment observed in regional Victoria, 75%. South Australia's regions are well ahead of the national average at 69.6% and have already achieved the national target to see at least 75% of young people in regional Australia achieving school or equivalent. And while we know the South Australian rural regional, rural and remote communities are diverse and by no means homogenous to this statistic. South Australia's very remote areas also have the second highest attainment rate just behind Queensland. However, like elsewhere, the gap still remains between South Australian regions and Adelaide. And we encourage policymakers and leaders alike to continue to work on shrinking that gap. Even so, this outcome remains an impressive feat and certainly paves the path for other states to learn from and replicate the wind striving for its outcome. Another target in our ambition is to double the proportion of overseas migrants settling in regional Australia by 2032 nationally. We are headed in the right direction with South Australia again amongst the states leading the charge. Regional South Australia saw the second highest increase in overseas arrivals between 2021, 2020, 2021, 22, jumping by 347%. This was just behind the growth scene in regional Victoria, where overseas arrivals jumped by 474%. While this is certainly in line with the reopening of Australia's borders and a return to post-pandemic new normal, with overseas arrivals almost returned to pre-pandemic levels, the share of national overseas arrivals settling in South Australia is increasing. So, Whilst that's some of the good news, you might expect that some areas did not progress in the right direction and not, not all measures <clears throat> could in, in 12 months. So there are several areas that continue to dominate the national conversation. In particular, those measures are around recruitment difficulty and housing availability. We want to bring down recruitment difficulty for employers to below 40%, yet over the past 12 months, unfortunately, that measure has continued to rise. At the end of last year, job vacancy figures hit record levels, with many regions finding themselves competing for the same talent. Job ads grew three times faster in regions than in our capitals, with the demand for doctors and nurses skyrocketing. Without intervention, this gap will continue to widen. South Australians' regional recruitment difficulty remained unchanged during the first half of 2023, 
at 67%, while other states increase difficulty even further. So to the next target headed in the wrong direction, sadly, is access to housing in regional communities. Critically, building approvals are down and not keeping pace with population growth. Overall, monthly building approvals have been in decline nationally and across the nation's regions since August 2021. However, they have dropped the least in regional South Australia. While still falling, monthly building approvals dropped by 11.5% in regional South Australia compared to 23.8% across our regions nationally. So with the HAF recently approved and the South Australian Sperry Owned Office of Regional Housing now established and kicking into gear, I'm aware that South Australia's concentration in this domain is great and should be applauded. So what does this mean for South Australia? We need to create a system where top-down influence and investment has the opportunity to meet bottom-up ideas, energy and momentum. We understand this ambition to rebalance the nation is filled with complexity. It's a big, wicked challenge, something that we discussed at length at last week's summit. So it's my ask that we embrace this complexity as regional practitioners and that we harness our collective knowledge and power and influence to make a difference. Reflecting on the strengths of South Australia's regions, not only in the ambition targets, but what each of you are doing in your own work, I'd ask you to share this with your peers nationwide. The RDA network is a meeting of minds such as today, and also looking for further ways for us to work with you as the South Australian RDA network. Another way to amplify your wins is to contribute to our pledge on the Rebalance the Nation website. We've received more than 60 pledges from across the country. This is organisations championing their ideas. And the city, as you can see here, the city of uh, Mount Gambia, who's a valued member of the regional Activators Alliance has recently pledged an affordable housing plan for Mount Gambia that will seek to address the shortfall in affordable housing supply in the community. And one other new pledge, given that our elders is our one of our new, not only a member of uh, Regional Australia Council, but also headquartered out of South Australia, I thought it was fitting to share that uh, they've recently announced a major community giving grants program that is built around the regionalisation ambition and grants of up to 20,000 uh, can be applied for uh, in, in relation to the regionalisation pillars. So I'd urge you to, to share that with your networks more broadly. So it will be the collective actions, plans and strategies such as this that combined will propel the trajectory towards our 2032 ambition over the coming years. We cannot wait for governments to do this alone. It has to be collaborative response with government, industry and community leaders. So please reflect on this and the contributions that each of you are making and how we can share these. Real change will take time. It will take determination. It will take the course correcting. It takes being open to this process. The highs and the lows of change, we all know it well. So ladies and gentlemen, we can change the future of regional Australia and the nation because it's our time. It's time to rebalance the nation. Thank you.